Here's what I believe. I believe that you can't run away from who you are, okay? You can mask it, you can go somewhere else, other side of the earth, but eventually who you are will always catch up with you. It's the thing about life. And growing up, I was always described by a lot of people as shy, polite, and nice. She was fine. I actually accept that because I was shy, I was very polite, and I was a nice person. And I'm not just saying that to butter myself up. I was legit. This is how nice of a person I was. I never, ever got punished all through school from nursery all the way to the end of high school. Okay, I lie. One time I was punished. But it was one of those punishments where the whole class was punished because of noise making. I wasn't really making noise because I'm nice. Um, it was more of I was sharing the same breath with a bunch of noisemakers, so I took one for the team. That's how I look at it. So only one time was I ever punished. I, was, I, never, I never did things that got kids into trouble, okay? I was a nice kid, grew up in a nice house with nice parents. I had two amazing, nice older siblings, and I went to nice schools where I got not very nice grades, but that's only because I've never been academically inclined, despite the fact that my dad went to Alliance and he always reminded us that he went there. Sorry, dad, it is what it is. I was never that strong academically, but what I was strong at was the arts. Anything that had to do with arts from painting, music, film, writing, that is where I always came alive. And so, it's for that reason, that inclination, that this nice guy, this shy guy, this polite guy, ended up in, in a world where most of the characters are very loud. Most of the characters are very in your face. Most of the characters are haughty. Most of the characters are, well, let's just be honest, they're not that nice. When you come into this situation, this new world, and all I wanted to do was express myself. I'm so grateful that I had parents who were like, can you imagine, at 18, I told my dad and my mom, I want to be an actor. This is in Kenya. This is 2003. This is before we even had a lot of TV shows on. And my parents were like, okay, do your thing, we'll support you. So, so I really had this pressure, this personal pressure to excel. I had to make sure that I did very, very well in the arts. And, the, and all the people I admired from the acting sphere to the TV presenting, to the radio presenting, to writing, I noticed something interesting about all these guys. All these guys were, how would you say, bad boys. Being in that zone, I knew about energies. I've always known that there's a thing like energies. If, you, if you're around this kind of energy, it could rub off on you. I just never thought it would happen to me until I made a conscious choice to let it happen to me. Because when I looked at myself at age 22, and I'm working in a radio station, and all, there's all this admiration, there's all these expectations, and then there is this role you have to play. If you've ever noticed, there's, there's a, 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 a thing I've noticed with, uh, with media in Kenya. If you're a lady, um, they like it if you're very loud, if you're very opinionated, and if you're a guy, they like you if you're very aggressive, if you're very controversial. Now, I was neither of those because I've always just been nice. I like, I like Vituzi Mechil, Spendi Makasiriko. I'm just a very easygoing type of fella. But I told myself, ah, fam, you will not last in this industry. Not with that kind of attitude. You need to be. Kwani, how do you think all these other men have made it thus far? It's because you have to play that role. So I decided... I will actively play that role. I'm an actor anyway. How hard can it be to pretend to be a bad boy? And also, I have to emphasize on the word pretend because I was like, I can just be like this when I'm around cameras, I'm around people, but when it's just Nick, just be you. You know, just be the calm, chilled out you. And then I told myself, ah, fam, you're 22 years old. You've been nice all your life. Wouldn't you like a little bit of danger? A little bit of action, because the bad boys are the ones who get all that action. And action I got. 
I got a lot of action. True story, I was almost stabbed to death. I was uh, chased halfway across uh, Madare, Maisa, if you know the area, Maisa, from where Maisa is to the stage by irate youth. I know when you think irate youth in Kenya, we all know that image, right? That's the image. They chased me. Um, I got dangled from a balcony of my own apartment. Uh, oh yeah, and of course, the crown, jewel, uh, death threats. I know where you live, I know you're wearing a blue shirt, and I know that you like to go chill in that side of the office. I'm coming for you. And all this, by the way, are from women I dated. <laughs> like, like that's, that's how much danger it was. And do, please don't get it twisted, it's not that at the, it's not that I went out being a bad boy and I attracted bad girls, no. I, I feel nowadays, anytime I think about it, it's because I wasn't being my authentic self. I was trying to be a bad boy around them, but then because you can't run away from who you are, kidogo kidogo, the real Nick would always seep in here and there. This became a pattern. We're talking six, seven years into being an actor, being a writer, being on radio, being on TV and all this. And every time I'm on, when I'm on set with people, I was very switched on. And I like to believe that I'm very good at my job because the passion for the job was not um, inherent to me being a nice person or me being a bad boy. It was just something I really, really knew and always studied and always wanted to excel at. So. Now we're seven years deep into this, into this career in the media and film industry, and I look so happy, so with it, so connected out there. In every single photo, I'd look at it and be like, oof, I look so good. But I felt so bad. And it was, it was that thing for, I would go out with, with these uh, fellow presenters, fellow media practitioners, and the thing was, it was always, I felt like it was a same conversation, different outfits type of situation. Same conversations, different venues. There was never, I didn't enjoy the talk about conquests. I uh, didn't enjoy the talk about how, how your bravado got you a deal here and there. I just liked people who were nice and real about themselves. So when I met her, oh, it was a game changer. Because I met this lady. First time I met her, she was dressed like a punk rock artist. And I'm a huge rock fan. And I remember seeing her and I was like, whoa. Yo, that's, that's fly. And then the next time I saw her, she was in a wedding dress, in sneakers, running. And I was like, whoa. I really have to meet this girl. Uh, she wasn't running away from her bride groom to be. No, it was just a photo shoot. But it was such an amazing photograph. I started talking to, slid in a DM uh, and decided to, you know, just start conversation. And from the moment we started talking, I realized something very cool about this lady. She was, she was nice. She knew she was nice. She was okay in, in being nice. In fact, she reveled in being nice and she was unapologetic about it. And honestly, that was the biggest thing that attracted me to her. The fact that she was mm, quite a looker, that was just icing on the cake, but it was, it was the person she was and how she brought out and how she expressed her authentic self, which I found so appealing. So obviously, the, the nice Nick that was always down there, that was always drowned through what a lot of bad boys do, and a lot of bad boys do is cheat. What a lot of bad boys do is cheat. So cheated like this, try to hide conversations. From the first time I met her, even the photos, she was always, she's got this beautiful smile. But then she stopped smiling. And she stopped smiling anytime she'd see me. Like I'd get to where she's at and she'd be like, oh, so it's you. It was more of, she was, she was angry, but she said, oh, you know what, I'll give you, I'll give you another chance. I'll give you a second chance at this because Maybe it was a mistake, you know? The ego in me obviously said all that rhetoric. It was a mistake, I'll never do it again, I'm so sorry, she meant nothing. Dude, this is the thing, yeah? I wish, I wish when I met you, I wish you had told me who you were. I wish you had just told me that, ah, I'm not that guy, I'm not that kind of person to commit to someone because I would have understood. The thing I hate is that you took me on this journey 
believing that you are this very, very nice person because this is Nairobi. Do you know how hard it is to find a genuinely nice person? I'm talking about a person who has no, there's no ulterior motive. They're not being nice to you because they believe you will get a promotion in a few months and you'll suggest a job or a tender or something. Someone who just wants to be nice because they're like, this is who I am, this is how I feel, I don't want anything in return. Those people are hard to find. And when you find someone like that, and then you give them every single reason to not believe in good people anymore, that's crushing her entire perspective. She told me, I can never look at you the same way when you receive a phone call, because I don't know. Could it be someone else you're trying to hook up with? She told me she hates how nowadays, every single time a man says anything to her, she has to second guess it, and she always has to have her guard up. When I met her, she was very, very free-spirited, very nice, very artsy, exactly the sort of person the hopeless romantic me, way back when, always wanted to have because I believed that I was worthy of that. And she told me, after the second cheating, by the way, I wish you had told me who you were, because a nice person like me, I don't deserve this. And I remember that, oh man, that ate at me. It ate at me because I heard the old me saying, Nick, this isn't who you are. You've always known that this is not who you are, yet you've been trying and always putting on this persona, trying to be this bad boy because you believe that it will get you somewhere, you'll become more successful. In truth, it didn't really. It didn't. I tried being a bad boy, being controversial, but all it did for me was I felt like it was always adding extra, extraness to my persona that I didn't need. If I was very erratic on the airwaves, when I'd be around people who are like, oh my God, I'm a big fan of your show, I would immediately have to be like, okay, okay, think about the things that you're always talking about and try to be that person. It was so heavy. You get to the house, you feel, oh, I have all this on me and you just want to, un you know, just unburden yourself of all of it. And it's because it's not who you are. You just need to be who you are and everything will be fine. But here I was, confronted by the real me versus the me I've been trying to push to the entire world as who I am. And this amazing person who I know is not going to stay. First time round, I asked her the first time when this happened and you forgave me, why? And she was like, I didn't forgive you. I just, I just believed in you. That's the thing that killed me. Because I was like, imagine this person believed in me more than I believed in myself. This person believed that I wasn't, because even when, when she'd watch me uh, mingle around with people in the social circles, later on, she'd always tell me, why are you always so extra when you're around people? Like, that's not who you are. And it's true, it's not. It was just, it was just me trying to be trying to think that I could be someone else for the benefit of a career, which came tumbling down and not in a good way. When she said that, you know what? I feel like I've wasted years of my life with you. I feel like I'm such a nice person who's been put through the worst of situations. I can never trust you. I can never trust people. You've basically just taken my whole world, flipped it upside down. What am I going to do now? And coincidentally, that was, that was about a year before my brother died. It just kind of amplified the whole situation and I started taking active steps at trying to be nice again because I knew that that's who I was. And it was about time I stopped running from who I was. And the, the best thing that happened was she would have left, but she didn't. She stayed. And to be frank with you, to this day, she's never told me why she stayed. And that's something I think about every morning. Every morning when I try to rebuild her trust in me. Every day when I try to make her world safer. 
every hour when I check up on her to make sure that, you know, you know where my headspace is at. I'd like to know where you're at right about now. And I know it's not going to, it's not going to happen overnight. It won't happen in two weeks, five years. It may take forever, and that's fine. I'm, I'm glad that I got a second chance, not just at a relationship. I also got a second chance at being who I really am. And who I am is, I'm a nice guy. In the media world, it's not cool to be nice. It's not a flashy thing. It's not even something people hold in high regard. But it's who I am, and I'm cool with that. And when you have someone who is on that same wavelength with you, really, that's all you need. <laughs>